Hi, my name's Protus Dave. Fasten your seatbelt because we're about to dive into the world of everybody's favorite single celled eukaryote, the protist. So, what exactly are protists? Well, protists are single celled eukaryotes that are not animals, plants, or fungi. Protists do, however, display characteristics so similar to animals, plants, and fungi that it's believed that they help pave the way for evolution of these organisms. Protists are often organized into three subgroups animal like, plant like, and fungus like. Animal like protists are protists that display animal like attributes as they breathe, move, and reproduce in a similar way to multicellular animals. Animal like contains organisms such as the amoeba. Plant like protists are a form of protists that behaves in a way similar to plants. These protists contain chlorophyll and carry out photosynthesis just like multicellular plants. Examples include red, brown, and green algae. Fungus like protists, of course, behave in a way similar to fungi. These organisms have a feeding stage in which they function individually, but when food gets scarce, the cells form a mass that functions as a unit similar to fungus, as spores are used to reproduce. This group includes many types of slime molds and water molds. Protists have a very fascinating anatomy. Though they are eukaryotic cells, their size matches that of a prokaryotic cell, as their cells are generally very small. And because they are eukaryotic, they have their DNA contained within a nucleus. Oftentimes, protists even have methods of transportation. Some use a flagella to get around, while others use little cilia, and some even just have little blob-like structures that they just, like, blob around with. Protists are said to have evolved from simple communities of prokaryotic cells by the process of membrane enfolding. In some prokaryotic cells, Parts of the plasma membrane folded into the cell to make the structure in organelles. A process called endosymbiosis was then used to create the mitochondrion chloroplast. In this process, a prokaryotic cell enters a eukaryotic cell as food or a pest and ends up becoming a part. There are many close relatives to protists in other groups. One very close relative to the animal-like protists are sponges. Sponges feed and behave in a way that is very similar to such protists. They live in the similar moist environment and are heterotrophic, just like protists. Sponges also take on similar shape as protists, supporting the idea further. Mosses are some of the closest relatives to plant-like protists as they convey many similar attributes, such as structure. Moss lives in and around water as well, just like many plant-like protists. Moss is even autotrophic, just like many protists. Cyanobacteria is another very close relative to protists, as they have the ability to carry out photosynthesis, just like many plant-like protists. Protists play great roles within a community, ecosystem, and even a biome. Let's go to the ocean. Here we are out at the ocean, and out here, protists play a very important role. Out there, there's both phytoplankton and zooplankton. Zooplankton feed on the smaller phytoplankton, and then the zooplankton is eaten by larger organisms, such as whales. So in a way, protists provide the base energy level for the food chain. Protists also play very important roles on a larger scale. For example, in this water there's algae. Algae produces more oxygen than any other plant. Most of the oxygen you're breathing right now was made by a protist. Protists also play very important roles in maintaining balance. For example, back in this forest here, there's a lot of fungus-like protists. This fungus-like protist helps decompose dead matter and keep everything clean. It eliminates the poop. And we don't want that, so that's a good thing. Due to their small size and intimate association with the environment, protists are extremely affected by changes in environment. Even small changes in pH or temperature can have detrimental effects on protists. This does not only affect protists, but affects many other species, as protists serve as a base later autotroph and are decomposers. For example, if a temperature increase was to kill off a bunch of plant-like protists, this would affect a whale population. This is because the protists serve as the main means by which the whales get energy from the sun. If this temperature change also killed off fungus-like protists, then this would cause the environment of many other organisms to become poor, as dead matter would increase. There are both negative and positive sides to the relationship between protists and humans. On one hand, protists provide most of the oxygen we breathe, help decompose, and serve as a major mean of energy. On the other hand, protists give us some of the worst diseases in the world. 
For example, malaria is caused by the protist plasmodium. Protists also cause African sleeping sickness. There are many ways that protists can be manipulated for human use. For example, sushi. The seaweed surrounding a sushi roll is just algae, a protist. Protists can also be used for treatment of sewage. Sewage is full of bacteria and poses many environmental issues if it's just disposed of without doing anything. However, if protists are added to the sewage, they can eat away some of the bacteria and make it suitable for disposal. Protists can also be used as a thickening agent in pudding and candy. So, what can we learn from protists? First off, protists teach us the fundamental principles of how eukaryotes evolved. Along with this, protists can help teach us the fundamental principles of energetics, as energetics do not get much simpler than protists. Protists even teach us how diverse life is, even on the lowest levels. As though protists are all very similar, they are much, much different from one another. Protists also show us how much us larger organisms depend on smaller organisms, as if it wasn't for protists, we may not even be here. Thank you, protists. Our world would not be the same without you.